Milkweeds have some of the most complex flowers in the flower kingdom. At first glance, they look like a typical flower, but look closely and they appear stiff and sharp with a guarded entrance, making you feel a little reluctant to stick your nose into it for a deep inhale. Probably for a good reason, not only are they usually covered in insects, they are toxic. Here is what a typical flower looks like. When you see lilies at the store, you notice the brown tips protruding from the center of the petals that drop pollen as they are handled. These are called stamens. They are the male part of the flower, and most flowers have them. But milkweeds don't. Well, sort of. Most flowers have distinctly separated male and female parts. Milkweeds have their reproductive parts fused into a column called a gynostegium. The gynostegium is surrounded by a corona. It resembles a whorl of flower petals, but they are in fact not petals. This plant is an attractive deceiver, not only to us, but to insects too. Surrounded by the delectable scent of nectar, she lures in the weak and the fragile. The corona is composed of a hood, which acts like a reservoir of tempting pools of luscious nectar. The nectar reservoirs have tipped projections extending towards the center of the flower called horns. Sacks of pollen called pollinia await those that are lured by the enticing deliciousness in the hoods. Inside, the stigmatic slits. Many insects arrive expecting a moment of sweet desire but end up losing a piece of themselves or their lives. The flowers act like a manipulative seductress, luring in many, but not all are released. You need to be a pretty large insect to pollinate a milkweed flower. Many insects get their legs stuck in the stigmatic slits or under the horns, losing their appendages, destined to live the rest of their lives as amputees. Others can't break themselves free, risking starvation or becoming an easy meal for predators, like this adorable little jumping spider. Milkweeds are named because of a white latex that is found throughout the entire plant. When you break open any part of the plant, it oozes this milky substance. The milk is slightly toxic, containing cardiac glycosides that can make you very sick. These glycosides are actually used in medicines to treat heart failure and irregular heartbeats, but too much can cause a poisonous overdose. So do not drink the milk of the milkweed. There are several species of insects that can eat milkweed with no problem at all. The most famous one is the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly. As it eats the toxic milk, it too becomes toxic, a great defense against those that may want to eat them. This process is called bioaccumulation. It's kind of like you are what you eat. This same thing happens to other insects that have evolved to eat milkweeds, like the longhorn milkweed beetle. There are several species of milkweed beetles. This one's scientific name is Tetropus femoratus. Tetropus means four-eyed. Interestingly, their eyes are divided in two because their antenna appear to grow right through them. It's possible that this evolved because their antenna were getting in the way of their eyesight, so they developed eyes on either side of them. But that's just my theory. The female beetles lay their eggs on the stem near the base of the plant. The larvae hatch, bore themselves into the stem, travel down the stem into the roots, where they eat the roots throughout the fall. They overwinter in the roots and emerge in the summer, right when the milkweeds are flowering. In the fall, after the flowers have been pollinated, they transform into green textured pods, holding the lives of the next generation inside of them. As the pods dry out, a gaseous pressure builds inside of them until they burst open, expelling seeds carried by delicate white parachutes. This bursting process is called dehissing. The small parachutes suspending the members of the next generation are carried away by the wind to their new homes. Mm. 
Milkweeds are a haven for insects who have evolved closely with them. They are also a threat to those who have not. They are beautifully unique, not your typical flower. You don't have to go far to see these flowers and appreciate their seemingly menacing characteristics. Visit one and see if you can find any pieces of poor insect souls who are now existing as amputees. 